Dr. Hansa Fish is proudly brought to you by Hansa Pilsner. ago, just a few dozen hardy volunteers and pioneers gathered here at Grassroots Dam for the first edition of what has become one of the most popular canoeing races in the world. The Hunter Fisher River Canoe Marathon today attracts hundreds of paddlers from every corner of the country, every corner of the world, and the fact that it's shown a growth year on year is certainly evidence that the paddlers are voting with their feet. So 34 years down the line, this has become one of the most popular races going, and the reason is very simple. This Milo-coloured water starts off in Harip Dam and is an artery of water that finds its way all the way down to the Cape East Coast. And this is the guaranteed water that brings the paddlers back year after year to the Hunter Fish. While the elite paddlers come for the racing, the titles and the prestige of places, the people of the fish have a much bigger agenda. It's pretty exciting. I think um, everything leading up to has been pretty fantastic so far. Um, and then we plan to have a little bit of a scope with the after party as well. So we're not just here for the good paddling, but we're here for the good vibe. How are you it's feeling? It's my first time on the river. Never been down the river. It's my first ever. So I should be lucky. Um, hopefully you don't swim too much. No, 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 we don't swim. We never swim. We don't swim. <laughs> I think everyone here is excited. Um, it's uh, and it's not too uh, not too windy, so hopefully we'll gain some uh, gain some water ground here on the dam. I think uh, the biggest challenge is convincing my partners not to shoot Keith. <laughs> the plan of today is we're just gonna go for it and shoot anything. Um, we are the mighty heroes. Um, we've got Iron Man, Thor, Superwoman, Hulk, Superman, and then we're just gonna conquer Keith today. <laughs> The fish, a big water. <laughs> what the fish and chippers love is that the hunter fish gets a few necessary evils out of the way early on, like the flat water paddle across Crossridge Dam, then the long portage around the dam wall, then it's down to the river where the fun starts. Day one is 46 kilometers long, but the first nine kilometers are packed with action, all the way to the huge Keats flyover ramp. First up is the double troubleshoot, built in 2010 to save carrying around the Collets Weir. It's a few short paddle strokes from the start of the river section, and there's hardly any time to settle into your boat. There's nothing like it in the whole wide world. A slide and then a 30 degrees left, some choppy water and then the drop. That drop that catches so many boats out. Try this experiment on a paddler friend. Just say the word, Keiths. Probably they'll start sweating, heart palpitations, breathing heavily and spontaneously swimming. Actually, for three out of four fish paddlers, it's a short job. But for the brave minority, it is 30 unforgettable seconds.
Shooting Keats and getting it wrong nearly always results in admin. Oh, he just pointed a kiss. Hit it up, hit it on the side towards the end of the rapid and just wrap. Keats is the land of tall stories. Whether you make it or break it, the war stories and excuses afterwards are the domain of exaggeration and hyperbole. Um, we bought a terrible boat and it just broke on the first uh, weir. Oh, double trouble, yeah. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the pilot's fault, it was that way. We didn't <laughs> swim, we just <laughs> went through the weir and it cracked. Okay, we one paddle down. Willows, we know what a car wash feels like. <laughs> Otherwise, it's great to be here. Always. I haven't been here for six years. Flew in from the UK to do it and I'm um, loving it. It's good to be back. There are a couple of things that every fish paddle needs to do. Um, things like shooting keats, conquering craddock weir. Um, we've given a bit of the top paddlers a hard time by making uh, everyone take a selfie with Fornello Quella. Um, take a picture of a sheep. That's very important. Every craddock paddler has to do that. They're on my back. That's why they call. After the mayhem of the top section, the river opens up somewhat, and by the time the paddlers get to Hünenkrantz Bridge, the nerves have steadied, and they can appreciate the stunning Karoo countryside, while their seconds drive the humpy, dusty road alongside them. About two hours into the first stage, the paddlers get to Sodpans Drift Rapid, or Salt Pans if you live south of the Burevors Curtain. It starts with a small Sodpans weir. This year, different, because the shoot markers have been removed, so the driver has to line up on two white stakes below the weir. Soatpunt's rapid proper starts at the bridge a few hundred meters downstream. It's a premium spectator point. First timers think they're going to hit their heads on the bridge, but it's actually very safe. Then the rough water starts. saw a marked change at the bottom of Soatpunts. A hard lateral off the right-hand bank saw plenty of swimmers. Forty-five minutes from the end of the stage, a landmark leg stretch at the portage around Katkopuia. We're having a blast. We made it down so fast, but we sank our boat. But uh, we have to uh, tell the story, and now we just want to see the finish and uh, enjoy the hunters at the end. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Where do you guys swim today? Swim at the finish when we back at Milo. <laughs> no such thing in swimming on this river. It's it's the shoot. I mean the, the keys fly over. Because when you're at the back, 
You feel like you're on a pavilion watching the boat go down the rapid. Amazing. The finish on the right-hand bank on a farm below Nutsford Bridge marks the end of the tough first stage, one of the longest marathon stages in the country. Even for Grijsbarde like Oom Geel van Deventer, Geel of 45 Berg's fame, are drawn back to the fish. Now the fish is a, a fantastic uh, uh, rapid-wise. I mean, you've got fantastic rapids. I mean, we used to paddle on a Berg. The Berg doesn't have, have much uh, rapids, but here you've got beautiful weather, beautiful river and, and a wonderful hospitality of the local people so it's a fantastic race to come and do every year. Race boss Peter Mare has his eye on a race within the race. I think it was a, for me personally a very nice race. We sort of in the middle of the pack but there's always a race, a club race, I think in every club in South Africa and uh, I think I'm happy to say that we are the first guy one from Fish River Canoe Club, so yeah, awesome day. Well, we, we, we were hoping there's a, a prize uh, that you win your weight in beer, because I think we've got at least a bucky load <laughs> between us. <laughs> yeah, what's this all about? Uh, this is uh, the traditional UST classic mohawk. We do this every year, we come for the chaos, we come for the party. <laughs> he was in on it too. Uh, my first day was kind of hectic. I lost my boat and I had to swim for about 15 or 10 minutes, but I managed to find it, and so yeah, I did well after that. Great! Absolutely fabulous day. Thanks to you and Andrew. Without them, we would not be here. This, the river is pumping. It was great. As sponsors, the Hunter team talks the talk and walks the walk. Two of their number raced this year. Delamain and Rian can honestly claim to be people of the fish. Hansa, you know, was involved with this race. Sorry, I, I will lie for you and tell you exactly the years I've been from. But you know, it's 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 something that's what Hansa is all. It's refreshingly different, you know, and that's what we want to do. You know, with uh, associate with the paddlers. I mean, I think all the paddlers around the country, you know, Hansa, that's a property that we wanted to earn, and I think we're doing a phenomenal job, you know, with that. And uh, I just see everyone is enjoying a cold Hansa after the race. Hansa fish. Early morning for day two of the Hunter Fish River Canoe Marathon and the fish and chippers are loving the fact that they are getting the best of the conditions. The Karoo weather is ideal at 7am as the back markers get ready to go. It's a shorter day, it's 36 k's as opposed to 48 and it's not nearly as technically demanding which means it's going to be a whole heap of fun. Three bridges and three weirs on the way into Craddock. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with situations. When you're spray painting a help message for the helicopter on the bottom of your boat, you know you're anticipating a pretty bad day. Boys behind me are looking pretty good. This man here is going for his tent, so it's going to be an epic fish. Give us five, dude. Good luck for it. We'll see you all in credit. I think a lot easier than yesterday. Uh, we need to finish. It's my 20th, so I want to finish this. Yesterday was tough. Side pans, I think, was bigger than I've ever seen it before. The organising is excellent, and it, it's a nice race for the second. Yeah, it's my first fish, so, so Alex is bringing, bringing you down the river now. It's good fun. It's been amazing, it's been quite an adventure. I lost one of my shoes, I lost my hat, I lost my dignity <laughs> along the way, but I had a really great time with my brother yesterday, so I hope that that continues, and I hope we, yeah, I hope we do well today. Such a vibe, such a kiss. And yeah, good luck to the paddlers there. With the reversed order start, the first of the back markers, the faster back markers, were off at 7 a.m. on what was going to be a stinker of a Karoo day, with the wind forecast to arrive at 10.30. <laughs> That's when the big guns leave in elapsed time. This is the, the sweep crew who paddle down <laughs> behind the paddlers. There are a couple more members of our team who paddle down with the group further down and we're there to basically make sure that everybody gets off the river safely. For the second year, the race hosted a short course option for the less experienced and this year, 
It included some suppers, some fish history. Sup or stand-up paddleboarding is a relatively new sport, especially in South Africa. Uh, we a handful of guys paddling rivers. This is the first time we had Hans of Fish a River Canoe Marathon. Uh, looking forward to it. We're doing the short course this year and then looking at doing the long course from next year. Uh, so I'm on an inflatable board. Uh, it fits into a little backpack. You can fly down to the coast with it. You can travel with it. You can hike up to a river with it. Worldwide, it's a really fast growing sport because there's so many different things that you can do. Uh, we get recreational paddlers, people doing fly fishing. Uh, white water, extreme white water running. Uh, so uh, then river races. There's something for everybody. Nice, nice fast growing sport. A 24 kilometer day for them starting above Baroda Bridge. The first of three bridges on day two, where the seconds can see their paddlers, give them spits and juice if they need it, but mainly it's all about encouragement and some flattery. The last hour features three famous weirs, starting with gauging weir. Two options here, the popular central line, with an optional swim, or the old school left hand line, where you are right up close to the spectators and you really don't want to swim. weekend is enjoyed against a backdrop of the magical town of Craddock. The race history goes back to 1982 when 52 boats started the first fish. There have been 33 of these fishes and it all started um, about four years even before that when uh, four mates of mine and I were driving up um, via Craddock to Johannesburg for a Datsun Shield final and I looked down at the river and uh, the Fish River and saw um, the fantastic waters of the Fish River and um, I looked at that and thought well guys that's where I'm going to be paddling soon. Got back to the canoe club in Port Elizabeth a couple of weeks later and we had a meeting and I said to the guys we've got to go up and, and try this out. Um, four years later was the first uh, marathon, the first Fish River canoe marathon and uh, it, I've just loved it ever since and kept on and kept on trucking up every single year. First from Port Elizabeth, but now I live in Cape Town, so I go down from Cape Town every year. No, we're very competitive. We, we always like to be there in our age group. We like to try and, and sort of be in the, in the top five in our age group um, and to, uh, to compete. Well, I think three is, is the camaraderie because with three in a boat and great friends, so that you have more chirp and talking and you tend to kind of uh, experience the river differently too. Um, it's a bigger boat, so your challenges are different. You've got to pick your lines early, and you've also you know, got to make sure that you steer, and Andy at the back's got to pull us around obstacles. So they're different challenges, but uh, generally it's, it's very exciting in a K3. The last compulsory portage is around the Marlow Causeway, nine Ks from the end of the race. This is a welcome leg stretch and the time to settle into the battle plan for the final two weirs and the rapids that lead to the grandstand finish in Craddock. Absolutely fantastic. The fish is just the best. Um, paddling with my wife and uh, Hopefully going to make the next 11 k's uh, with her. Awesome. Kuru hospitality. What more can you ask for? Uh, it's been good. We still marry. <laughs> Just 10 more k's to go and then we're done. How's the, so far, it's my, I'm a novice, so it's my first one, so it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I'll definitely be back here. Yeah. It's been just magic, magic. There's wider river and a few more flats, so the short course and long course paddlers mix and banter. Then the river flattens out into the long pool ahead of weir number two. 
Marlow Shoot on the banks of the famous Marlow Agricultural High School. From Marlow you can smell the Vorse brying in town. Then the crowds on the bank gather at the legendary landmark drop at Craddock Weir. Manned by a hard-working band of lifesavers, this is one drop you don't want to miss, even if you perish trying. Shooting Craddock Weir can feel so simple, but then it can go so pear. Start off by splitting the seams on the way down, then popping your splashy, then start sinking, then get caught in the pullback, into the suckback. What did I do to deserve this? All too soon, the finish creeps up through the blue gums and it's all over. There's medals and cold hunters and a real sense of elation and achievement. The fish is a race for the paddlers by the paddlers. Yeah, the entry's actually gone up year on year and I think you're the only race that can claim that. I mean, that's got to be a good sign. Yeah, every, I think everything we do is, our thinking is to accommodate, to make it uh, better and better for the paddler. And uh, I just wanted to say that we, we can't have a race like this without our sponsorship from ANSA. That gives us the power to, to really provide for the paddlers in every way. What the reverse order start guarantees is a raucous welcome for every struggler limping home. I had fun. He, he showed me all the lines and I was missing them. So. Yeah, thanks, guy. It was wild. So it's like a holiday, it's, a, it's, it's festive, it's fun, lots of mates, and yeah, the river's awesome, so yeah. Having my son with me today was so yeah. cool. No, he's joking. No, that's just a joke. He's just joking. My brother. <laughs> it's joking. Yeah. Are you doing it with your daughters? While some might be sinking, not the race ship, which has a new captain with his hands firmly on the tiller. Roy, you're taking over the reins, and you're taking over a ship that's in pretty good shape. Absolutely. Uh, Peter has done an absolute sterling job, and the committee, of course. Um, yeah, it's, it's got big shoes to fill. Yeah, the priorities for the community and the people that run this race, it's more than just two weekends of paddling, am I right? Absolutely. Uh, it's. Uh, it involves all, it brings a lot of revenue in, in, in for Craddock, so yeah. Well, you've got a good team of uh, workers behind you. We're looking forward to a great 2016 fish. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Awesome.
What the Hansa fish really does properly is the prizes. There are seriously good prizes for every conceivable class, and that makes for healthy competition right the way through the food. So fish is coming to a close, but it doesn't mean the things are over here because the party's just about to wind up, and the party always centers on the intervarsities. Now, some years the intervarsities are a bit watered down and they don't bring much chest, but Marty's never let us down. Gentlemen, what is the plan for this evening? Plan, um, I think we're going to take these fine young men, we're going to take them around and get them not drunk, <laughs> never drunk, the best kind of responsibly and look after them tonight. Yeah. These are the real people of the fish. Compare notes tomorrow morning. Saturday night focuses on the Hansa gig rig, Rubber Duck, and then a song from Matthew Mole that might have been written especially for the partying masses. The Hansa Fish is proudly brought to you by Hansa Pilsner.